Ooh. The Radio Whammo Breakfast. Talking politics with Phil Goff. It's Phil Goff all right this morning. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Wemo. I'm just uh, in Christchurch, actually driving to a conference and, uh, well, being driven, I should say, in case somebody dobs me in for using a cell phone. And it's a beautiful day down here. Yeah, well, just um, actually, we're just talking to our Christchurch correspondent a little bit earlier, and uh, apparently there's a bit of concern about the rebuilding of chimneys down there heading into autumn, winter. Uh, it's going to start getting um, getting pretty cold once again with the ones the southerlies come through, and these chimneys aren't being rebuilt. Well, that's right. It's the program's been a bit of a shambles because uh, you know uh, people aren't rebuilding uh, their fireplaces, and that's a good thing because you know you've got clean air considerations down here. Apart from apart from those I- in the rural, more rural areas where they can still burn their fires. Yeah, yeah, that that's correct. Um, but the program was, you know, to put in uh, heat pumps, and as of the end of January, I think they'd only done about ten, uh, and the list of uh, people needing those were, were were in the thousands. So there's a there's a bit of problem with coordination and planning and getting things getting the act together down here, and uh, you know that was I think also shown last week. Uh, Jerry Brownlee only just announced a program for helping people with rents uh, when uh, you know their their house was unlivable mm. and they were having to rent elsewhere but still meet their mortgage payments. Uh, the insurance policy runs out in about a week's time. And he only uh, announced it at the 11th hour, and there's been a lot of people really worried down here about how, how are they going to cope? Their mortgage payments uh, were putting, you know, they, they're paying the same mortgage payments. If they had to pay rent on top of that, uh, that was going to absolutely cripple them. Well, finally, the government has announced the policy, but, but it was far too late in the day. Mm. It should have been earlier, uh, taking into account the... Uh, the concerns that people have. Mm. Uh, you know, it's pretty traumatic for people anyway, and they don't need that extra worry uh, of not knowing what the timetable and the plan for the future mm. is. And but the th- same applies to those fireplaces. Well, with such an unprecedented disaster, though, it is hard to know, uh, you know, really what is a good timetable because we've never been through this before. That's right. It, 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 it was a big event and, and a hugely expensive event. Uh, and uh, Labor acknowledged that, you know, this was going to be a big ask of, uh, of everybody, and therefore we cooperated with the legislation before Parliament. We've largely adopted a, a positive and constructive approach. Mm. But our local MPs down here nevertheless feel the need, and I think they're right, to, to advocate for their constituents. And what I've seen down here, I was, I was down here last week, actually, and uh, looking, talking to some of the businesses that are, are suffered, particularly after the Boxing Day, uh, the second earthquake then. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they really feel that the, the government, you know, initially focused on the problem and then took its eye off the problem. And there are a whole lot of things that need to be brought together. And there isn't, hasn't been a good information strategy. There hasn't been a good coordination strategy. Uh, and we're putting a bit of pressure on the government to get its act together in mm. that regard. Well, Kiwis, uh, Phil, have had their say on asset sales. I think there's been a couple of polls now that put um, Kiwis against asset sales somewhere in the 60% range. But it would seem not enough not to vote national, with uh, national still riding high in the polls and uh, Labor still simmering away on around about 33%. Yeah, I think it takes, um, there's a, a time lag between the policy uh, and, and the public reaction to it. The public are absolutely against asset sales, and I'm committing Labor uh, without any equivocation whatsoever to utterly opposing the sale of those assets, and if we're elected, it won't happen. But uh, <clears throat> maybe people are thinking that National do another U turn like they did over Kiwi Bank. Remember, they were going to sell shares in Kiwi Bank last year, and they did a U turn. Uh, but Key has said this time, no, no, he's going to stick to the path mm. and he's going to sell the assets. That's not a good idea. Uh, it was reflected, I think, in a, a quite a significant fall in his own ratings, so down down 8% on TV1. Um, and uh, I'm looking to see a lift in, in Labor's ratings once, uh, you know, it, it, it becomes clear what National is going to do in that area as against what Labor is promising what, as its alternative. What, what they are going to do, they, they are going to go through with that plan of asset sales, but they're going, over the next few months, they're going to soften that message somehow. The PR machine is well, going to soften it. They've, they've tried to soften it already, and, and frankly, they've been misleading in what they've said. I had a debate on Friday with uh, uh, John Key where he said I was wrong about contact energy. I didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, they privatised contact energy in 1999, I said that the shareholding had very quickly moved from the so-called mum and dad investors to corporate investors, 
and uh, to majority foreign ownership. He denied that. Uh, the figures were from 225,000 shareholders when they first floated. It's now down to 85,000. That is a third of the initial uh, shareholding uh, numbers. And 75% are owned by corporates. Mm. And, and the majority are owned by Australians. Now, that's going to happen across the board. And his talk that, oh, we're going to keep a 51% share uh, with the government is really just part of that softening mm. up process. Mm. Uh, in the end, the whole lot will be privatised and New Zealanders would be unwise to buy the line, oh, it's only a partial privatisation. Mm. They'll go the whole way as soon as they think they've got the ability to do so. But uh, that message uh, about you know uh, going overseas, I mean, that is important. But isn't the really... The, the message that really does need to get across is the fact that the, the sales don't make economic sense when the, uh, the government can earn more from dividends over time than from just an initial um, cash up. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. The Treasury acknowledged that the return on SOEs is about 15% uh, and the cost of borrowing, um, uh, which, you know, they'd retire the debt if they sold the SOEs, is only about 5.5%. Mm. So you don't have to be a mathematician to work out that actually uh, New Zealand taxpayers are worse off by selling the shares because, I mean, look, the three SOEs for the power companies, uh, they returned $700 million in dividends mm. last year. It's probably business. too much, actually. Some of that should, should have gone back to the consumers. But I, when I asked Key in the House what happened to that dividend, he said, oh, it went into providing social services. Mm. So we, we, we sell off the, the SOEs. Uh, the, the, the government loses that money. The, the, the New Zealand, uh, New Zealand uh, shareholders, mm. every one of us, mm. lose an asset and we lose it forever. Uh, and, of course, then the, uh, the, the private shareholders will demand a greater return again on their, their dividend, you know, for their dividends. Yeah. And the price of power will go up as well. Mm. So there's every reason to oppose this. It's just straight ideology. He doesn't need to do it. It's to, it's to mollify the right wing. Uh, but it will be bad for New Zealanders, but good for foreign corporates. Mm. Uh, and that's why two to one New Zealanders are against it, and they've got a chance to show that they're against it uh, by voting against it on November the 26th. Bill Goff, have a good day there in Christchurch. Thanks, Lemo. Catch Cheers. you next week. See ya. Cheers. The leader of the Labour Party, Phil Goff, there with us. It is now 8.39. I